And when it comes to us speaking of revolutions, the world this year was certainly shaken by a few. Let's cross live now to George Bader, uh, a member of the Occupy Wall Street movement and a social justice campaigner. Thanks for joining us on the program today, George. The socialist agenda seems to be perhaps gaining traction globally. I mean, just witness Bernie Sanders' rise in the United States. What do you think Fidel Castro's death could mean to those inspired by socialism, if indeed they're old enough to actually remember? I think, you know, as, as your report just said, he is absolutely a symbol of the ability of people to stand up against incredibly, empower, incredibly powerful imperial forces. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm speaking from London today and, and you know, I'm, I'm part of the, the Occupy London movement, of course, which is very much the, the sister movement of Occupy Wall Street. And, and in London, we have um, Bernie, Car um, sorry, we have Jeremy Corbyn as the leader of the main opposition party. And so the difference with Bernie Sanders, obviously, who, who had a sort of heroic failure, but uh, remains important, um, is that Jeremy Corbyn remains the, the, the leader of the opposition party and stands more of a chance than anybody in my 40 years of, of being on this planet of actually coming to power in, in you know, what for hundreds of years has been an imperial country and what many see as, as still a, a neo-imperial country in terms of the, the influence that the city of London has across the world. Um, I'm often, it's maybe not the most precise analogy, but I'm, I'm, I often say that the relationship of the city of London to the British Empire is like the, the Catholic Church to the Roman Empire. You know, it maintains a lot of the same, essentially corrupt power over the wealth of, of parts of the world thousands of miles away. And, and my country has a history of hundreds of years of prioritizing the interests of financiers in the city of London over and above the, the, the livelihoods and indeed the very lives of, of people on the other side of the world. Um, and in that context, the, the, the iconic place that, that Fidel Castro, despite you know, problems with human rights in, in Cuba over the last 50 years, the iconic place that, that he holds, I think, is, is very important. And you know, as you said in your question, you, there is a direct line to the Bernie Sanders, to the, to the Corbyns, and to the, you know, the occupiers of this world. And, and, and I should add that I think significantly you know, alongside the, the progressive mm. governments in Latin America in the last 10, 20 years. Um, what you've seen in, in countries like the UK and the US is a move from the margins of this kind of, you know, essentially socialist politics. You know, five years ago it was Occupy and now it's Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn in the political mainstream. So I think, you know, that, that legacy that, that Castro represents is... is you know, important today as it, as it has ever been. Now, now, George, when you talk about the legacy of Castro being important, there are many saying that it, it's a mixed reaction to the le legacy of Castro. For example, seeing celebrations on the streets of Miami over Fidel Castro's death. Uh, some would argue, though, they have good reason to be celebrating. Your, your thoughts on that, George? I, no, I think that's certainly true. I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm the last one to say that, you know, that Cuba is some, is, has been some wonderful paradise over the last 60 years. Um, but we need to remember that, that, that compared, if, if you compare it to, to parallel situations across Latin America over the period since 1959, um, you know, literally Nazi counterinsurgency techniques and people were put to work by the US empire on country after country from, you know, from um, El Salvador to Guatemala to, to you know, Chile, etc. And, and what we're talking about is hundreds of thousands of people having been brutally murdered. You know, no poor people having decent access to health and education and all these things and, and you know when you compare the legacy of Cuba since since Castro to, to those countries where the Western countries have had the greatest influence um, I, I think you know there's no contest in terms of you know the level of, of human rights and, and social justice you know absolutely being strangled by the most powerful economic and you know and imperial entity of all time has had a huge huge impact on Cuba and you know over 600 assassination attempts of Fidel Castro of, of course has inevitably meant you know various kinds of repression in Cuba that of course you know I, I as a you know absolutely a kind of you know, a, 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 you know, a Democrat and a liberal and, a, you know, believer in, in individual freedom as well as social justice, of course, you know, I wouldn't want that, you know, in my backyard. But I think one needs to really understand the context. You know, it's, you know it, it makes no sense to compare the, the, the lot of people in Cuba to people in Miami. It's much more, makes much more sense to compare the lot of people in Cuba to people in all those other Latin American countries in the U.S. backyard. Because, because one must remember the circumstances in which the, the Cuban revolution took place. 
you know, the US had installed yet another brutal dictator whose main job was to, you know, get rich off empowering US corporations um, to, to exploit the land um, against the interests of the majority of the people. Um, so I think, you know, yes, absolutely, there's, there's a mixed legacy. And, and you know, as always, I think the, the, the job of the new generation is never to try and repeat the past. Absolutely, it's to learn the positive lessons of the past, but also learn from, from, from the mistakes. And of course, you know, I think human rights are, are very important, but equally we need to understand that human rights are a very deceptive stick often to, to, to bash the people that have actually been standing up for the vulnerable. And you know, as, I, as I've said already in this interview, the human rights record of, of Castro versus any number of US-backed dictators, both over the last 50 years in, in Latin America, but also across the Middle East now, for, for instance. You know, I mean, you compare the Saudi regime, for instance, to the Cuban regime. You know, there's no contest in terms of how those two treated the vulnerable in terms of, you know, health care, education, literacy, rights of women, etc. So I think it, it's very important to put these things in, in context. All right, George Barter, a member of the Occupy London movement, thanks for your time today. Thank, Thank you.